Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at Algebra 1 Standard A.11b, specifically some activities that I created for teachers to use. They want to review this concept with their students. This is coming from a blog post that I just wrote. It's on my website 5minutemath.net. I'll also include a link to this blog post in the description of this video. So let's walk through this blog post. So it's going to start with some basic teaching videos. Uh, the A.11b standard, we're simplifying numeric and algebraic expressions using the laws of exponents. And so there's actually quite a few different teaching videos I made for this particular standard, multiplying powers, dividing powers, power of a power, negative powers, and even rational exponents. Then I also want to make sure we ground our work in how we did in the state of Texas on our recent star test. And so the reason I'm making activities for this particular standard because as you can see, we did not do too well in 2023. On number 10, we needed to uh, simplify this expression. We only got 38% of our students getting it correct. Here's an explanation of that problem. And then look at this one, number 35. We only had 4% full credit. This is a, um, a two-point problem. And only 4% were able to get both of these numbers correct in this drag and drop. That's the lowest percent correct for any problem on any 2023 test grades 3 through Algebra 1. And there's an explanation video of how to solve this. And these activities that I'm making are going to follow the principles of active playful learning. What we don't need are more worksheets or drill and kill. What we want are activities that are active, engaging, meaningful, social, joyful, and iterative. They should be fun. Math does not have to be boring. There's a little bit of information about that. So here are the activities. And right here is where I'm going to put the video that I'm making right now, in case you wanted to watch this. So here's our first, vid our first activity. It's called What If. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to verbally play with expressions. They're going to be fairly simple because you're going to want to Count the students off A, B, A, B, put them into a, um, a large circle, have the A's take a step in, so they end up creating an inside and an outside circle. And then what you do is you're going to simply display a basic expression like X to the 3 sevenths power, right? And so you see how that's uh, coming from this right here. So you're going to start with just the basic expression, X to the 3 sevenths power. Then you're going to ask a series of questions, right? What if... I divided it by x over 2, or x to the second power. What if I multiplied it by x to the 14 thirds power? What if I squared it? This one is obviously what they did for the actual star question. But after each question, this the, each pair is going to talk, discuss. They're just doing it verbally. You're going, going to debrief as a class, discuss the correct answer. But each time you do that, you're going to rotate, have the inside circle move to the left or the right, have the outside circle move to the left or the right. So you're going to repartner every single time. It's supposed to be quick, fun. The students are standing up the whole time. Uh, there's as much joy as you would imagine of just trying to figure out who their next partner is going to be. And before you ask each next question on that same face or that same basic expression like x to the 3 sevenths power, you always rotate. So they're always doing it again with new students. So you repeat it as needed. You can get in and out of that within 10 minutes. So here are some variations. Uh, instead of just verbally sharing the manipulation, you can also write it, right? So if you said, what, what happens if we square it? You can also write that expression so that that visual anchor as well. You can allow them paper, personal whiteboards as needed. You don't want them to have to lug everything around with them, but some students might want to work it out. Um, if you want, you can have them share the correct answer and name the law of exponent that was used to simplify the expression. You can have an anchor chart available with laws of exponents. And you can, if they get really good at this, you can add additional bases, right? So you can have x to the 6 times y to the 3rd, and you can do things with two different bases. So that's our first activity. Our second activity is simplify around the world. So what you're going to do is you're going to pair students up and display an algebraic expression that needs to be simplified. So here are some examples from released star. Not all of them, but I just went ahead and labeled them here for you. So this is number 10 off the 2016 star, number 6 off the 2017 star, 50, 51 off the 2017 star, so on and so forth. And what you want students to do with a partner is to list out each step, 
the relevant law, and then the partially simplified expression per row. So we'll take it step by step. So here's this uh, problem, 2016, and there's linked to the actual image of the problem right here. So I recreated it right here. And then what you want is, there's there might be multiple ways to kind of solve this, but how I would solve this is I would write the action rewriting using like terms. This is the associative law of multiplication, and I'd want to group the bases and the constants together. Then I'm going to simplify the constants, and you notice how I've bolded which action I'm taking. I'm going to simplify base A. I'm using both the negative exponents law to get that negative 2 uh, up into the numerator, and then I'm going to use the product law because now it's A to the 4th times A to the 2nd, so I'm going to end up adding those two exponents, and then so on and so forth. And so you have a simplified expression. All they're doing is simplifying it, but they're explicitly writing their action, and they're explicitly writing the law that they are using. Now, what we're doing, we're calling this simplifying around the world because they're having a certain amount of time to do this with a partner, and this is this is for points, right? So each person in the partner, in the pair, earns three points if they have the correct answer. First, you want them to have the correct answer, and then one point for each step correctly labeled, either at, you know the action and the law. You might need to be a little bit generous with that to begin with until they get used to naming the laws. Most students aren't used to naming the laws. Um, if they if you have time, you could do it with another partner. What you do is you keep the work continuous, right? So you say who's going to have the most points at the end of the week, who's going to have the most points at the end of the month, and you do this with multiple partners. Every time you get a new problem, you get a new partner. So that's why it's called around the world. So uh, everyone gets a chance to work with somebody else, and they're just keeping track of their points. At the end of the day, you know, maybe you give them a prize or something, but it really doesn't matter too much what they earn. Maybe bragging rights. Um, really, they're just going to practice working on simplifying these and explicitly writing the actions and laws. So some variations. Instead of you as the teacher solving the problem for a class, you could have a pair of students come up and share their work. And they earn uh, two extra points if they try, but one or more of the steps are incorrect. They earn four extra points if every step is correct. So good for them. You could have students in groups of three. Uh, there is a scaffold, right, for students that struggle. You can actually have the action from your own worked example, the action and the law already written out. All they need to do is fill in the simplified expression. So these are some hints to tell them what they need to do next. You can use this as a daily routine, and you can use this to encourage timeliness. Only give them the first three minutes of class, and if they want to get points for that day, they have to be in their seat on time. And then students can maybe create their own expressions and submit them to be used for the next time. But in order to do that, they have to create their own uh, completed example with the steps and the laws written out. Our next activity is called rolling exponents. And so what you want to do is you want to pair students together. You want to have some dice. Ideally, they're blank. They're erasable. You can write directly on the dice. If not, you can use a key. I'll show you that in just a moment. But either way, you want to give the students a simple base and exponent on the board, like x to the fourth. The students are going to roll both dice. The first die is going to tell them what operation to use. The second die is going to tell them what that second um, base and exponent are going to be. And then you simplify the new expression. So here's the key. So the first die might be, and this would be if you don't have erasable dice and you just want to use standard dice, right? A 1 would be add, a 2 would be subtract, 3 would be multiply, and so on and so forth. These are the different operations. The second die would be whatever base you're using, x, y, whatever. And then you see the exponent is just the same as that number. So a 6 would be x to the 6th or y to the 6th. So if you were to start with the base of x to the 4th, and the first die would be uh, rolling a 1, that means you would multiply the two bases and square the product. And then if your second die here is a 4, that means you're going to you know, have x to the 4th. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with your x to the 4th, and you're going to die 2 says you're going to add a 6 to the, six to the x to the 4th, and you're going to multiply them. That's what this 5 up here told you to do and square it. So x to the 4 times x to the 4th will be x to the 4 plus 4. That's the 8th. You're going to square that, so that's going to end up being x to the 64th. And so 
it's just the randomness here that's going to have the students trying to figure out what they are supposed to do next. So here are some variations. You can add a timer. So give it, make it really quick because these are going to be simple expressions here. So maybe only give them 45 seconds to simplify it. Allow the students to decide on the initial expressions, right? So get a little group activity, a group consensus, and then roll the die for the class to solve. You can add an extra die for negative exponents, right? So you can add a third die. And if that third die lands on an odd number, the new expression will have a negative exponent, right? So if we were to get a negative here, it would be x to the negative fourth, right? <coughs> so we can let the students roll die one and two twice in order to create a larger expression. You do have to clarify any use of parentheses. That will change the simplified expression. And you can add additional dice to represent additional bases. But once again, you have to clarify any use of parentheses here. You could also work backwards. You can give students a starting expression, x to the fourth, and a simplified expression, like I had on the key here, x to the 64th, and have them figure out what was rolled. So see if they can go from x to the fourth to x to the 64th with one roll, and they would need to know that you would need a roll of five and a four in order to make that happen. All right, our next activity is called spot the mistake. So what you're going to do is you're going to work out some examples of simplified expressions, but they're each going to have a mistake. Now, in this example here, this is from uh, around the world here. These are the star problems. I've highlighted the mistake simply for your reference. What you want is to not show the mistake highlighted to the students. You want them to spot it. So you would give them this without any highlights. But you see here, right here, I used instead of the negative exponent law, I did the quotient law. And so I inadvertently, instead of bringing that negative 2 right up here, up into the numerator, I just divided 4 divided by negative 2, and that's going to be a to the negative 2. And so I ended up just bringing that down all the way down here, and it was wrong all the way. The question is, is can the students spot it if you take all the highlights away? And I did that for each of these problems here, right? So what I did here was um, I used the quotient law, but I misapplied it. So instead of x to the 9 minus 3, I just divided 9 by 3 to get x to the 3rd. And so there's a simple um, problem here. Uh, for this particular one right here, I didn't square the 7. I didn't distribute that properly. So I just left that 7 there rather than having the 49. So those are some examples. And so what you do is you give them an example, and then they simply try to spot the mistake. Is it an arithmetic mistake? Is it the wrong law of exponent being applied? Or is it both? When a group spots the mistake, have them come up to the front of the class to explain the mistake, but give every other group 30 to 45 more seconds to try to spot it before the group coming up to the front explains what the mistake was. And then have them, after they hear the explanation, simplify it correctly. So here's an example here. I misapplied the product law. Instead of q to the 5 plus 12, I did q to the 5 times 12 to make q to the 60. So here are some variations. Um, instead of putting a time limit, share the example with a mistake at the beginning of class, and then allow them to work on it all throughout class, and then go over it at the end of class before the bell rings. Every once in a while, if you want to be really, really challenging, share a networked example with no mistakes, and don't tell them that. See what, what they can figure out. Have them create their own examples, complete with highlights, and submit them for future use. And for a slightly scaffolded version, create examples where every law is listed correctly. That's the middle column, and only the mistakes are going to be in the application of the law in the right column. So our last activity is called DIY simplification. Students are going to create and simplify expressions using the law of exponents. It can be pretty pretty open for them. You want students to work in pairs or groups of four, and each pair is going to create an expression for the other pair to solve. Now, what makes this interesting is you want to include some limitations to help focus their creation of these expressions. It's not the wild, wild west. You want to focus them saying, here's some examples. You must include the product law if that's something that you're wanting to focus on. Maybe you want to limit it to only two or three bases. Right? You don't want some massive creation with 14 bases that nobody can solve. Maybe your limitation is you must not use a fraction. 
or maybe your limitation is you must use a fractional exponent if you want to focus on those radicals. So you want to give them some limitations, just have them create something now before they share the work with their partner. They need to solve the expression themselves. If the students, once they switch, struggle to solve their partner's or the other pair's uh, expression, then the one that created it can actually help them solve it. Now, there's going to be some students that get all turned around. They're not really sure how to solve it. Uh, you can use a radical equation calculator such as symbollab.com. They can just type it in and it will show them the correct answer with the steps listed out there. So this is something that you could just walk around and facilitate and give feedback and you don't need to run around trying to solve every single problem if they have this symbollab.com as, as an example, as a resource. So variations. If they succeed with this activity, you can give them multiple limitations for them to work with, two or three things at a time. Really kind of narrow what they can make. You can write six limitations on the board and number them one to six and give each group a die a roll before making their expressions. Whatever they roll will be the limitation. Uh, instead of randomly grouping students, you can break the class into uh, those that struggle and those that excel at this, and you can give each group a different set of limitations to best support their learning. And this could be a whole class review. After each group has uh, created, exchanged, and simplified their expressions, save them. Don't throw them away. And then for a bell ringer, bring them out and have the class simplify it individually or in pairs.